and welcome to Netball Natter with me, Zara. This week, it's a Vitality Netball World Cup special. And someone who knows a thing or two about that event is Vitality Rose and bronze medalist, Ebony Azari brown Hey, Ebony. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, good, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me. No, it's a pleasure to speak to you. It's so exciting because it's been a year since... That incredible event I mean I can't take believe it it's gone so 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 quickly I think just to think about a year ago we were in Liverpool and the, the excitement and the buzz and um, who would have thought this year would turn out how it did but never mind <laughs> but yeah talking to me about about that really how have you been over the last you know couple of weeks months how has it been for you um, it's been obviously it's been it has been quite a change, but I consider myself really quite lucky in the sense that I've been one of the ones who've been able to work from home. Um, obviously, I'm pregnant at the moment; I'm eight months pregnant, so um, being able to have like home cooked meal. And I've seen on social media that you've been making the you know the use of the good weather by long walks and bike rides and all that kind of, of thing. Of course, of course, it's been so nice. Like I'm based in Wiltshire, so. Um, I think without COVID, I would never have even discovered my area, but um, the walks and the sunshine, um, it's just been like, it's been so, so nice. Um, so just to get out and keep active, keep healthy. So hopefully once I've had baby, my return to the court um, will be a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, it's just been really nice to kind of have find that like mental headspace as well. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people have found that, that they've had more time to, like yeah. you say, find new routes to go on walks and that kind of thing. So yeah, some positives. But Indeed. take me back to before the event. Um, you were around sort of 96 caps, international caps at the time for England and you got the call from Tracy. What was that like? Um, I just remember getting the call from Tracy and just having the biggest smile on my face. I think um, it's such an honour to wear the red dress and never mind having 96 caps it's still as special as when you receive that first call up and to be at a home world cup um, in front of your friends and family and have that opportunity um, I was just really really humbled so um, I just remember Tracy as you know her laugh and like she was like oh you've made the team and I was like oh my gosh this is so exciting so it was a, it was a mixture of emotions just jubilation excitement a little bit of anxiety because again you have to perform on the world stage and given our success at the commonwealth games in 2018 obviously there was a lot of expectation um but in, in saying that um i was really just excited to get going getting into camp train as hard as possible and to hopefully put our best foot forward yeah how did you deal with that pressure going into the world cup on a world stage like you say after the incredible success from the Commonwealth Games? It's something that we spoke about as a team um, really early on and I think we try to dispel that like very much a part of the England Roses ethos and values is to have fun and the reason why we were so successful on the Gold Coast is because we just really enjoyed the journey like we all got around each other we all just focused on the task at hand whether it was just from a training um, session to a training match and we took it day by day trying to make those small and small and little improvements and we actually just focused as we did in, in the Commonwealth Games just on the process we said if we take care of the process hopefully the outcome and the result will come so um, although there was lots of media attention um, we also were very much part in amongst a really supportive environment so from England Netball and the volunteers and the workers who work there even our fans who were all so encouraging um, the social media shout outs were just absolutely fantastic so we knew that we were in the best position that we could be and that it was more about just focusing on the task in hand rather than thinking about what could be um, in the, the t at the end of the World Cup in itself. Oh, I like that that look at, about it, that it was just fun and you remember to have fun despite it being such a, you know, prestigious event. It was so fun as a fan to be there. I mean, what was that like as a player stepping out on court to, to just hundreds and thousands of people watching you, uh, you know, flags, chants, just what was that like? It was absolutely incredible i think those are the moments as an athlete you really live for 
Um, never mind having a 12 player squad. We had about, a, like it was almost like a thousand player squad because <laughs> everyone was screaming and shouting and supporting us. But to be fair, it started even before that, even before we arrived at the venue, um, we were obviously staying um, opposite the Rose Garden. And I remember waking up on our, um, the first morning when the competition was to start and seeing the thousands of fans camped out in front of the screen. And it was just, we've never seen netball like that before, especially in the UK. So to see the level of support and everyone was decked out in their like red Nike hoodies. And it, it was just, you could feel a, like a sense of excitement um, and the atmosphere was really building. So to step out on court for the first time, to hear the cheer, to hear the roar, um, it was absolutely electric. You were representing your nation for the third time uh, at a World Cup. What was so special about this one? We know it was on home soil. But was that part, you know, big part of the factor? It definitely was a big part of the factor. You're making me sound like a veteran, like <laughs> three. My no, third no, no. <laughs> experience and just, you know, a legend. Indeed. Um, but no, it was really special. I think, as I say, it was a home World Cup. So the majority of all of our friends and families um, could be there. Mm -hmm. And I think for me personally, um, it's always been an ambition of mine to try and reach my hundredth cap. So to know that I was starting the competition and I had the opportunity to um, mark that milestone, not only for myself, but for all the support that I've had over the number of years, um, it was just, for me, it was, that was the most special, special thing. So, and to do with that group of girls, obviously we had eight girls returning from the Commonwealth Games and obviously a number of youngsters coming through. I think it just showed how, much England netball had progressed from my very first World Cup until this actual third World Cup, how far the sport progressed and how it was in such a good state um, in terms of the mixture of ages, mixtures of experience and the standard of performance and how it, how it had grown. So it was just great in the sense that beforehand, um, it was very much Australian and New Zealand, number one, number two, and everyone expected them to be in the final. Whereas this World Cup, we did not we didn't know it was, it was up in the air as to actually there were a number of teams who could have made it so it was great to be in amongst the mix and like i said third world cup but still just as special as the first mm. that's brilliant no like you say it was interesting because there were so many teams at such a high level and you really couldn't call it but yeah what was your favorite moment if you had to pick i mean can you think of one particular moment that you look back on? Um, I think, there was, to be fair, there were so many. Like, I think when you look back, sometimes you're very much in the bubble when you're part of the team. Um, you're very much shielded. But then it's been great in the last couple of months to really reflect on that experience. I think the initial, like I said, the morning we woke up and we saw all the fans in the Rose Garden, I think that was a really special moment because... Um, it really signified that we had arrived, um, the level of support was there for us and the fact that we just had to go out and do our best. I think, like as you say, stepping into the arena the first time, the way England Netball had literally presented Liverpool uh, Echo Arena, it was amazing. You stepped in there, you, you, it was almost like a spectacle, it was an event, you felt a sense of like glamour and grandeur um, and the stage was really set in order for all teams to perform. Um, another moment for me obviously was winning that Jamaica match on my actual 100th cap. Um, Jamaica and England have had a hotly contested rivalry for a number of years so to go out and put across a four quarter performance that was consistent, come out with the win, um, I think it really buoyed up the team and really gave us a lot of confidence going into the last latter parts of the pool round and hope, and then obviously into the finals. Um, but also there was moments where, say, when Leila Guskov obviously did her Achilles, um, the way in which it's a memory because the way in which the team all came together and made us all so proud in terms of we are more than just athletes, we were actually were a family. And again, the focus never changed, but I think in terms of just having that level of um just kindness and affection for her and again as as a team how we came together i think that's one of the highlights in terms of um it was it, it was just more than a game in terms of it just being netball um and then obviously going into the final stages so i think it's 
there's been a number of memories I can recall that just make me proud to be a rose and to have been part of that journey and to be in a part of that World Cup that makes it so much so special as an event in itself. You have a lot to be proud of, Emily. <laughs> what is your proudest moment of your career? Proudest moment of my career? Um, I think it's got definitely got to be probably 2018 Commonwealth Games gold. Um, for so I remember being 13 and going to Wembley and watching England play Australia. And at that time, they were getting beaten by 30, 30 goals. Um, so it's been every, it's every athlete's dream to stand on the top of the podium and win a gold medal. But I think to do it how we did it um, in the environment that we created with the belief that we had and with the, the team that we had um, on the Gold Coast has definitely got to be the proudest moment because it's, it was a mark of all the hard work, not only of me as an athlete, but like I said, our support networks, um, my university at the time, like in terms of how they supported me, my family, my friends, um, the sports science team, the media who'd support us and got behind us. So um, it, that's probably got to be the pinnacle because we, re we reached the top at that moment in time. But again, I think, as you say, in the World Cup to have it at home and to see how we'd built a legacy and the momentum had carried on from that and we'd raised the sport to a different level where it's created different awareness where younger girls now have an ambition to be a rose or to try and aim to be a professional netball athlete um, it really kind of changed history so I think having seen the levels of support that we did at the World Cup um, I think again that's another proud moment to know that I was a part of um, getting that ball rolling for that to happen. Mm. You talk about that momentum which has been created by the likes of yourselves. How can you know how can the game build on that momentum going forward? Where would you like to see the future of netball? Um, the future of netball, especially in the UK, I'd love to see a professional netball league. Um, I'd love to see a lot more commercial investment into the game. Um, and I think if we can have a league just as good or even as better as the Suncourt Super Netball League, I think it'll leave international netball, um, especially for the England Roses team, in a really good place moving forward. Um, I think obviously there's, at the moment is um, it's been quite topical in terms of how we can go into more grassroots communities and access different athletes from different like um, ethnicities and minority ethnic groups again to see if we can unearth some special talent that might actually be the future Jeeva Mentors or Joe Hartons or Helen Housby's of the future so um, I just I'm just hoping in the next couple of years um, that the ambition will be just to continue to grow the game that see a lot a lot more funding more a more professional league at the Super League um, Super League level but also having more athletes on the Vitality Rose full-time programme as well, because I think the setup there is world-class and it's definitely had a momental or monumentous like, impact in terms of um, the level of training and the standard that we'll be able to put out, we've been able to put out on the international stage. Yeah, it's fascinating to hear your insights and also, uh, you know, all your memories from the Netball World Cup. Yeah, it's just great. Um, I have been doing this thing on Netball NASA where I give some quick fire questions to the roses. So are you ready? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe yourself in three words? Three words. Oh good gosh. Okay. <laughs> Ambitious. Um ah, three words. Sorry. Ambitious um determined and i can't say three i was gonna say up for a laugh like <laughs> smiley. <laughs> smiley there you go oh, any laugh. yeah that's <laughs> fine <laughs> no they're three strong enough, words. Three enough. <laughs> yeah, they're good words yeah. uh, what song can't you get enough of right now i won't ask you to sing it though so don't worry um, to be fair, I am a big, like, Beyonce fan, so I know she's, like, old and she's, it's not old, but I mean in terms <laughs> of she's, like, 
she she's not necessarily current putting anything out current now but if I wake up in the morning I've got any Beyonce song on it kind of starts my day in the right way yeah yeah no she's definitely empowering love it <laughs> um best piece of advice you've ever received don't sweat the small stuff I like that yeah I think it's just more in terms of as an athlete you can get so hess up on um little intricacies but I think it's just making sure you keep the bigger picture in mind in terms of what you're working towards what your purpose is mm. we can all take that you know away whether you're an athlete or you know any anything yeah um, favorite tv series or documentary at the moment Alton abbey Alton abbey <laughs> That's it. is that what you'd be doing later um well I just watched the movie I didn't even realize there was a movie and then I watched it the other day and I was like oh this is pretty good like I know I love a good period drama which is really yeah down to navy <laughs> oh yeah you like what you like um <laughs> favorite food spaghetti bolognese I absolutely love it I think in terms of, well the way my, I used to love it when I was when I was little my mum used to make it all the time but Italian is definitely one of my favorites so if it's done well it's yeah mm. yeah are you a starter or dessert kind of lady? Dessert. All day, every day. Um, into sweet. that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always thinking, when can I have my slice of cake? Yeah. Um, who inspires you on and off the court? Who inspires me on and off the court? Um, on the court... I would probably say um, the old, well, the old England captain, um, Sonia McLeamer. Mm -hmm. um, she, when I was first entered the squad, she oh, was obviously my captain, but um, she really took me underneath her wing. Um, her and Amanda, and Amanda Newton, to be fair. And um, I think really showed me the ropes and was very much a tutor and gave me lots of tips and guidance. And I still, to this day, um, are really grateful for the words of wisdom that she provided. Um, again, they also set the benchmark in terms of how the game could be played, how to explore, like expose and um, develop your potential. And um, yeah, I just think it's the way in which she, um, very outgoing, ambitious herself, and um, just allowed me to again to see that to dream big and nothing was um, was in, nothing could be impossible to achieve. So I think between the both of them, I think they're very very good role models for me growing up. And um, yeah, I still I'm still thankful today in terms of the guidance and the leadership they provide me as a, as a young athlete. Um, off the court, I'd probably say my mum. Um, She's like my best friend, biggest critic, biggest supporter at the same time. But I think she's been to nearly every single netball match that I've probably ever played in, um, screaming her lungs out. Um, and mm -hmm. also, like, I grew up mostly in a single parent family. So the fact that she has been my rock throughout, I think, hopefully, obviously, I'm having my own child myself. But if I can em or emulate um, any of her um, teachings as a mother, um, hopefully my child will be in good stead. So they probably the, all those three people. Mm, she sounds like an amazing mum. <laughs> last but not least, finish this sentence. The best thing about being a Vitality Rose is dot dot dot. The friendships that you make um, inside the squad and you get you basically get to travel with your best friends doing the sport that you love but definitely the friendships because um, they go way beyond the sport. Mm. That's brilliant. That's all I have to ask you for those quick fire questions. And you do you! <laughs> <laughs> um, You're testing me. <laughs> yeah, 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 well, there we go. Um, before I let you go, a lot of players haven't been able to get out on court in the normal way. So do you have a message for those, those people? My message would be just to stay positive. Um, we're obviously experiencing really strange times at the moment. However, netball will be back and it's just important that you try and stay active, stay positive, keep up with your home skills in terms of on the wall, your wall work and your landings and your footwork, just to make sure that when you do return to the court, you're in the best shape possible. But um, yeah, keep positive. We will be back together at some point in time. And um, I think we'll all 
be so so grateful i'll never take netball for granted again given the sabbatical we've just had but um yeah it will be back i don't think anyone will uh, that's brilliant thank <laughs> you and thank you for everything and enjoy reliving all those netball world cup memories i will do thank you bye, -bye.